I would say the number one most common um, character that gets attributed to the oboe um, is the so-called like, snake charmer. And this character has appeared appears in compositions, you know, in the range, like the full range of, of classical music history. So um, one, uh, I'll start by playing a little excerpt from Samson's Samson and Delilah's this bacchanal uh, begins with an oboe cadenza. might be familiar. And um, of course, you all know Scheherazade. And actually, um, the Christos Hatzis piece, Byzantium, is a really nice example of this character. So yeah, and in fact, actually, the origins of the oboe are in the Middle East. Um, the ancestor of, the direct ancestor of the oboe um, in Europe is the sham, but the sham was um, derived from a Middle Eastern instrument. Uh, so it's actually a logical um, characterization. And another one that I uh, find all over the place is the oboe in, as the shepherds. and. Um, there are examples of this from Bach to um, Minotti, Amal Night Visitors. Um, it, it's, it's all over the place, and it, particularly the English horn also. The huge solo from Tristan, um, Wagner's Tristan, um, and of course William Tell Overture. But um, in, from Bach's Christmas Oratory, oh, there's a nice little moment for um, oboes and oboe de mores that sounds like this. And of course, there is Symphony Fantastique, which has the um, oboe and English horn um, acting as the shepherds echoing each other, like as though it were across a, a large valley or something. So that sounds like this. And um, the, I'll just then the next character, maybe the last one that I'll talk about, is the, the most amusing, which is the oboe as a toy trumpet or a small trumpet. And um, this also is more common than one would expect. And I think that a lot of composers have heard the timbre of the oboe and think that, especially of the woodwind instruments, it does have a certain trumpet-like quality. And so. Um, my favorite example of this is in the Nutcracker, the entire scene, the entire battle scene where the um, rats are battling with the Nutcrackers is actually um, played, the, all the trumpets in that scene, the fan for the battle trumpets is all played by the oboes actually, the trumpets don't play a single note. And of course, this is all toys, um, a, a toy battle. So um, the oboe is so appropriate. And then another example that I happened to play recently is uh, the Rachmaninoff Symphonic Dances that has ev everything comes to a halt and there's a fanfare for two oboes in unison. So I'll play a little mishmash of those ideas. Uh -huh.
<laughs> so that's kind of funny. And um, but then, of course, I mean, realistically speaking, I think that the character of the oboe that sets it apart um, is not really so much a character, but it's the essential, um, of, like the essence of what the oboe really is, which is um, a soulful, mysterious, perhaps slightly dark instrument. Um, I mean, oboists can do amazing feats of technical wizardry, but I don't think that that is really at the heart of what um, the oboe is. I think it's a technical facility. Virtuosity is absolutely essential to great performance and super important part of what we do, but it's maybe not what makes the oboe the oboe. And so, I mean, I could play almost anything of the great orchestral repertoire to sort of demonstrate like what what the oboe is. But um, I actually think one of my favorite solos for, for this is um, the solo from Swan Lake, which is a theme that comes back over and over again throughout the ballet, um, signifying it maybe impending doom. But. some idea of um you know that I, is such an incredibly haunting melody isn't it it really is uh, one of my favorites um, yeah and it so feels I've, like a singing voice speaking to you well that's the goal anyway so of course you know, kevin is completely open to write anything that you know whatever comes to mind and probably not one of these these characters but <laughs> or all of them <laughs> yeah or perhaps all of them <laughs>